Hi guys, it's Ben here. I hope you're doing very well indeed. It feels like absolutely forever since I've sat in this chair and spoke about Liverpool. I know I've done videos since the day trips in, uh, in Porto and Southampton. I guess the Porto preview was from here, but it just feels like forever since I spoke about Premier League football in particular. It's been a couple of weeks since that Southampton game. Um, since then we had that break with no FA Cup football. Obviously the Porto away game, which I was at. I hope you've seen the day trip. It was an amazing, amazing trip. Probably the best away game I've ever been to, probably maybe the best Liverpool game I've ever been to, just in terms of what it meant, the, emph the emphaticness of the win, um, the, the night that followed, and just, just what an atmosphere it was um, in the city for those couple of days. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And I'm just feeling so positive about Liverpool, and it's pretty much all I've been thinking about ever since is the quarterfinal and what's to come and what we can achieve in this competition. It's just so, so exciting. We really, really are in a mix. Um, I've, I've been watching the other knockout ties. I watched Chelsea Barcelona last night. Um, don't fear either of those sides. Don't particularly fear Real Madrid, even though they're obviously one to probably avoid uh, because of their pedigree in this competition. Bayern Munich, perhaps one of the ones you want to watch out for. Other than that, apart from Man City, I really would back us to beat anybody, and even even if we do draw City at some point, um, which we probably will do if we're going to advance and you know go on to maybe win this thing, then you know we we, we beat the Manfield and the the game at the Etihad was a bit of a freak. So look, I'm so excited, but today is not the time to talk about that. And on the subject of today, I don't know when this video is going to go up because apparently YouTube is playing up right now. It's currently Wednesday night, just before the Sevilla United game. Um, so a quarter past seven and the news has just broken that Roberto Firmino will not be charged by the FA after Mason Holgate alleged that he heard a racist remark in that FA Cup tie back early in January. Um, so Roberto Firmino is cleared, he's not going to be charged, he's put a statement out, Liverpool put a statement out, Everton have put a statement out, the FA have put a statement out. The case is closed and let's just forget about it, let's not be divvies, let's not go on about Mason Holgate, let's not be calling cool for him to be banned, let's just move on, these things happen. Um, we've all misheard things, we've all wrongly accused things for, for, for whatever reason, so I, I'm not in the business of having to go at Mason Holgate. The case is over, thank God, Roberto Firmino is in scintillating form, fair play to him for, despite being under such stress over these kind of uh, accusations, even though he obviously knew he was innocent, fair play to him for being in such amazing, amazing form, and I'm excited to see him back in action on Saturday when we welcome West Ham United to Anfield, a team that uh, in the last two seasons, at Anfield at least, have um, have done well. Um, you know the. The two all draw last season, um, when we were on a good run, uh, was obviously a good result for them. And the season before that, uh, towards the back end, the Brendan Rodgers' reign, a 3 0 win for them. Um, both games, I was at Anfield for. And yeah, I'm going to be at Anfield again this Saturday, hoping for a more positive result. And, you know, the form we're in and the kind of downward spiral that they've been on as of late. Uh, we are obviously the huge favourites. Skybet have got us at 2 to 9, whereas West Ham are 11 to 1. So obviously, um, form and everything is in our favour, injuries even, we've pretty much got a fully fit squad to choose from, it's not a big squad as we all know but I think with the exception of, of Nathaniel Klein who is back in full training but probably not available select for selection, um, we have got a full squad, West Ham meanwhile um, have got a lot of injuries all over the pitch, in defence, uh, in midfield obviously Manuel Landini, uh, probably their best player, certainly their most creative player, the one um, you know, you, you really need to watch in that midfield. Uh, he's doubtful. I know he did post on Instagram that um, he was ready for Saturday or he was waiting for Saturday, but uh, he's since deleted that post, which you know could indicate that they're trying to keep it a secret or they're uh, or that he's just not ready. So um, he's the only kind of question mark. But other than that, Andy Carroll's obviously out uh, with a broken foot. So uh, you know. The only issue is Liverpool haven't played in a week and a half. We, we've seen kind of before the, uh, this season that when you do break that momentum and there is a week or more between games that we can kind of be a bit sluggish. But I think uh, I think the Anfield crowd are going to be buzzing to see the Reds play in front of them again for the first time in seemingly ages. And I'm you know I'm feeling pretty comfortable about this one. And it's a good opportunity to to pull away from some of the teams around us. Arsenal play Man City later on in the week. They got the League Cup final first, but they do play each other in the league later on in the week. Chelsea play Man United. Uh, Spurs have got a you know relatively tough game away at Palace. So we've got the easiest uh, fixture of the top six. Spurs also will feel they can um, pick up some ground this week. And with the with the with the former win and the the momentum we've got. I'm really backing us to do well here. Um, I've not really thought about a particular lineup. I will have a go now, though. I think uh, obviously Karras are going to play in goal. Trent played really well in Porto, and I'd have no qualms of seeing him play again. 
Um, so you know what? There's no there's no Andy Carroll playing at the, the up front for them. So the aerial threat is kind of nullified. Low and Altovich does have a lot of size and power. I will pick Trent for this one. Um, again, how, how do you how do you drop Lovren after his performance in Porto? But Matip has looked okay next to Van Dijk so far as well. I'd go Lovren and Van Dijk. I just prefer that pairing. And then Andy Robertson at left back. Midfield, I thought Henderson was great in Porto. Um, so again, it's a tough, a tough position to pick in. Milner and Van Alden were also really, really good. Oxley Chamberlain hasn't had much football lately. Maybe you want to try and get him back in the side. Um, I probably would go with Jordan Henderson, the captain, uh, Oxley Chamberlain, and Milner. You know what? Let's go for those three. And then Mane Salah, Mino, obviously. Score prediction: I'm going for. 4-1 to the Reds. I think we're going to be quite comfortable here. I see no reason why we shouldn't be. Um, obviously, leave a comment with your predictions and your general feeling. I, th I mean, this game is just so... For, for some reason, as much as the Premier League and the, the top four is still important to me, it's kind of hard to take my mind off the Champions League at the moment. Um, so, yeah, leave a comment with your thoughts on this game this weekend and your score prediction and your lineup prediction. But who do you want in the Champions League last eight, if we assume we're in it, which of course we would pretty much are. Um, this video may or may not go up before or after Man United's game against Sevilla, depending on whether YouTube sorts itself out. Um, you may know by now whether United are already kind of 3 up or something. So my dream draw for the quarterfinal is Man United. Um, and I think if we do <laughs> draw them in the quarterfinal, I will book my flight to Kiev. Um, not because I think we're going to necessarily beat Man United, but because save money on a European away game uh, in the quarterfinals, which means, you know, it frees up the uh, the Kiev fund. And if we don't make the final, which, you know, the bookies will probably tell you that we won't, and most people will probably predict that we won't, then you get a nice weekend in Kiev. So um, I'm not pledging to do that, but that's certainly in my mind. If we do get an English side, if we get Chelsea or Spurs, maybe I, I probably will just go ahead and book it because it's, you know, uh, it's going to save me a lot of money in the long run if we do reach the final. If we get a Barcelona, then wow, what an occasion that's going to be. If we get a Madrid, likewise, by Munich. Um, there's, there's teams like Shakhtar Donetsk and Roma in there who have to play each other in the last 16. Um, that's probably the uh, the tie with from which you, you want to play the winner. Um, you know, Shakhtar, not a nice trip. Rome, their fans aren't exactly friendly, but um, in, in terms of progressing into the last four, you'd love to play one of those sides. Uh, but probably likewise with United and Chelsea, really, when you compare them to... The, uh, the the powerhouses in Spain and uh, and uh, and Bayern Munich and perhaps Juventus as well. So I mean, it's just so exciting um, this Champions League running. But let's see how we got against West Ham this weekend. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be in hospitality because it is my 25th birthday on Saturday. So I'm being treated by uh, a friend of mine, which is lovely. And uh, hope to see some of you there. Uh, leave, leave your birthday wishes in the comments if you wish. <laughs> 25 years old, it's, uh, it's scary. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new and follow my other socials as Ben might say on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook. And I will see you next time. It'll be after West Ham, but it won't be immediately because I'm going to be drunk.